filmmaker, when you see a final product of a commercial, you think of the amount of time and energy needed to plan and execute it. But what if I told you some of these commercials are a product of thinking on the spot and creating a beautiful piece of work out of nothing. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how we did that by diving into a commercial that we made for Oakley. I'm gonna go over how we executed as well as conceptualized this project in addition to a full cinematography breakdown. This commercial was an interesting one because it came out of nowhere. As a production company and myself as a cinematographer, I love to have a planned production where everything comes together. But the reality is sometimes these projects, you have to be quick on your feet and just have fun with it. This project was spec, but we did have access to a running club that we we're good friends with. They just got sponsored by Oakley and wanted to do a full release in terms of this announcement. And this is literally all the information we had. So we had to kind of create something out of nothing. We just didn't want to show up and do a recap of one of the runs. We wanted to be intentional and really create something for our portfolio. With that in hand, the next day we showed up early to one of their group runs and asked the runners to wear their best Parkdale running outfit, which is the name of the club, as well as wear the glasses that the club provided for them. We planned out a couple shots that we wanted to get, but we knew that we just needed coverage of the runners with glasses. And what I mean by coverage is a variety of shots, getting them to run together as a group, unique angles to drive home that this is a community, slow motion shots to mix it up, as well as some solo shots so we can actually show off the product. I know this is backwards in terms of what you're supposed to do in terms of creating a project, but sometimes this happens where we capture a scene and then we have to work backwards in terms of what we want to create. And what we wanted to create was to put our style on the product space. As we had other productions happening at the same time, I took the lead in terms of what we could showcase with these glasses and this partnership. And the big thing was running, looking cool, and community. I wanted to go all out in terms of what we could handle in our capacity and build a set that was unique. If you're interested in actually seeing that whole process as well as my thought process when constructing something like that, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to make a video about it. In terms of the studio scenes, we all shot this in the span of two days. One with the model and the other being purely just product. And that's exactly what we're gonna dive into now. I'm gonna show you how we lit this as well as go over how we got some of these camera angles that you see in this piece. Uh, that's a wrap? Uh, that's a wrap question. <laughs> that's a wrap! <laughs> that's a wrap! <laughs> Yay! And this is the first thing that we're gonna be looking at. Uh, important topic I wanna dive into here is the concept of motivating light. We see that we have this light fixture in the background, which are our practical lights in this case. So this necessarily motivates a backlight or light anywhere on the subject. We obviously have that backlight from the tubes themselves, but question is, is where is this light coming from? And naturally to the viewer, when you see this, you think the light is coming from the tubes. But actually this light is a light panel. It's an Amaran F22 any light panel or any source will do. And that has double diffusion on it, as well as a grid. And what the grid does is it kills the spill so we're not spilling all over the room. So this is short shooting this way, and this is giving that nice wrap to the talent themselves. And this is basically bringing that light that we see here into the front of the talent. And that's what I mean by wrapping this light. If we didn't have that wrap, we would just get the light that you see here in terms of just backlighting and then we wouldn't just get this nice gradient or the detail that we see on our talent here. So this is what I just wanna start off in terms of always try to motivate your light in terms of what you see. It looked really cool with just being silhouette, but I knew that we wanted something else in terms of highlighting the glasses, highlighting the talent, because I just didn't want to have the fixture be the main focus. The main focus is the talent and the glasses. And this is just another detail shot here the where we can see this wrap happening, right? So this is from, again, our F22 Amaran light panel, double diffuse, shooting overhead this way. And this is just hitting the side of her face as well as the edge of the glasses. And as we were trying to highlight the glasses in these scenes, we had the colors always bring up the logos, which you can see here. But again, as she's facing forward, we have more light on that as well. The next shot that we're gonna go into is this overhead shot. I'm sure by the BTS that you can see here is I'm actually gonna go over how we rig this. So we had a eight foot speed rail and another eight foot speed rail connected by something we call a pipe joiner. 
And the reason that I did this is because of gear transportation. We rented a bunch of equipment, but we don't have a truck that can fit 20 foot speed rails or any rails like that. So we had to find solutions to what we actually can work with. And the best way I find to get overhead setups where we have to put a camera or make a grid or anything like that is using speed rail and using these connectors. So then these are on to medium roller stand so we can roll this around anywhere and then the camera is connected using this predator mount that's actually designed for car rigs again just utilizing what we have and then the camera is actually positioned right here and it is aiming down and in this shot you can actually see the monitor of the camera and this is something that you only see for a split second so we didn't really care much about it Right, but to light this, we actually use a really interesting technique in terms of getting this strip of light as well as getting it as soft as possible. So again, we're using that F22 as a key light and the Titans aren't doing anything here. The fixture is completely off, the overhead fixture that I was talking about before. And what we have is actually a V-flat. Now a V-flat is commonly used in photo studios, but it is, it has a black side and a white side and you can use it as a neg or you can use it as a bounce. In this case, we have the white side on the inside and we took that F22 and then we bounced it right into this white side. So it would give us this whole light that you can see on her body that is super soft. So it basically turned our small source into a larger source. And whenever you're lighting in things in terms of product, in terms of beauty, in terms of her skin, you want a large source that just highlights all the nice parts and it's not super harsh or anything like that. Because if you go into the previous example we had, it is a lot harsher. In this case, it, this is a lot softer and this is a more toned down look than what we had before. Now in the studio sequences, you see we kind of have three scenes. We have one with the big lighting fixture and the model. We have the one with the model with this light streak in the background. And then we have one with the lighting fixture and just pure product. Um, this is the frame that I'm going to be looking at in terms of that light street that we're talking about. And the first thing that I'm going to be going over again is that big soft source that we're working with. So in this case, we didn't use the F22 as our main key light. And what we actually used was an IntelliTech Mega Light Cloth. Right. So this is a big like I would say it's like a three foot by two foot panel light. And then we had this set to daylight. And then this is shooting through a six by four scrim, which you actually can see in her glasses, which we weren't really too concerned about. So on the light panel itself, it's a large source and it has diffusion on it already. And on top of the scrim, we actually have a grid. So we're not spilling all over the place. And this is just directed at her. You can kind of see the grid in the glasses, but that is our main key lit source. Because we're doing with a psych wall studio, there is white walls everywhere and we didn't want this light to spill everywhere. So what we did, this is gonna be a top view. We had three of these V flats. So that's one, that's two, and that's three. And this was the white side of the V flat on the inside. So it was basically any light that is bouncing off here is bouncing back into the scrim that we have there. And what we did is create a giant soft box. And this is my go-to setup whenever I'm looking for a soft studio light. I do this move all the time with the same exact lighting setup or even use like a source light that is bounced backwards in a bounce board and bounced into the scrim that we have here. It's just making a giant soft box. And on the camera side, we I'm just gonna draw the camera and this is gonna be another top down view. We actually have another V flat and this is my negative fill here. And this is camera is very, the camera is very close to the town as well as this V flat. And this is adding all the contrast on the left side of the face. So this is known as a far side key. And this light streak that you see on the floor here was done with one of my favorite lights, which is the Nanlite 60B with a projector attachment. So what this projector attachment does uh, there's the projector attachment and then there's the light on it and then it stands here that allows you to focus the light and basically project any image that you want they have little things that you can put in that you can do a window you can do streaks of light you can do really anything and the standard one is just a spotlight so in the spotlight mount itself 
there's little windows that you can actually direct it so we can get this beam of light and then focus it. And then what I had my gaffer and sometimes grip is move the light in and out and then just get a lot of variety when we're pushing in with the subject here. So when we're talking about lighting as well as I forgot one more light, we were still using that F22 on this side acting as a hair light just to separate from the subject a little bit. You can kind of see it right here and here and then the side of the face. So if we were to look at this in terms of that checkerboard that I always talk about, we're going from light on this side, on the left side of the face to this dark portion here. And then if I switch back to my color to another level of light. And this is just what I'm looking for in some interest of lighting. This is just what I like. And this is how I light my subjects when it comes to this fashion and editorial kind of vibe. The next thing and the last thing that we're going to be talking about is kind of how you light products. Now, this was VFX heavy as we had a bunch of wires in some of the shots. There are wires and some of the shots there aren't. So in the shot, the wires were removed. So we have the pedestal on the bottom. And what we have in there is a 600D. So if I were to draw this on the side, that's the pedestal. And then this is propped up on some Apple boxes. And then there is a 600D blasting straight up. And then here on the top, we actually have some acrylic. Uh, I tested a bunch with different materials in terms of how the light diffused in it and how much of the light went through. So we have the aperture around like 60% and then all that light is coming through. But in addition to this, we wanted to highlight all of the product. So we just didn't want to have the bottom be lit. We wanted to have the whole product to be lit. And in order to do that, we actually had that same F22 light panel shooting down this way. And then this was a move that we had to time it in terms of me moving the camera and then somebody turning the light off. But this is another example of motivating that light if you didn't want to do that light gag necessarily. If we just had that bottom light, it would look really dramatic. It would still look cool, but we're at this point of the video, we're trying to highlight all the aspects of the glasses, what they look like fully, and what they look like in their best light. And that's exactly what we did. So again, our motivating light is all this light down here from that box that we had. And then that's when we can bring in this panel that we have at the top here just to highlight the product and make it more nice. The point of this video in general is to show you that you have to take advantage of the resources and potential that is put in front of you. For us, that was having access to a reputable brand, talent from the running club, and product that just generally looks cool. Sure, we spent our own money and pulled our resources and network to pull this off, but it's a piece that sits in our portfolio that will sell us a lot of work in the long run. So when it comes to spec work, I always recommend making the time to do it. And if you want to see exactly that full process, we actually have a video queued up here for you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next video.